Oh, it's that time of the week again, my friends. Yep, that's me. Just a completely normal dude. Last week I covered the super mega allegations on stream, and I uploaded a Clips channel video that basically summarized what went down. In it I tried to stay relatively objective, but I still interspersed it with some opinions and analysis. Like, I 100% think Matt Watson was a fucking idiot in how he handled the Don thing, but offhandedly just dropping that he's like cheating on this woman, and then he got with a new woman and he's cheating on her now. This is too much for her to say without proof, you know what I mean? In terms of uh, them being ma malicious or not, I don't think there's enough to show they're malicious. I do feel like it's, it is one of those things where like, these guys are just fucking amateurs, bro. Like, these are YouTubers who are known for being goofy idiots. And guess what? In reality, they are goofy idiots. <laughs> If you're uninformed on this situation, I would start there. Now that Matt and Ryan have released their own responses, I did another stream basically going through what happened after Lex uploaded their video, and effectively the aftermath. Again, since this is a serious and kind of messy situation, I'm going to be cutting all that down to try and keep the core truths, along with my opinion where I think it adds something. I'm first going to be focusing on the super mega guys and their reaction to Lex's video, before I get into the other people who have inserted themselves into this situation. So, here we go. The first member of Super Mega to upload the response was a guy named Jim, who uh, I didn't even cover the allegations against him, but essentially this is what happened, according to Lex. He invited me to talk about what happened with Don because he didn't know the full story. I tell him the whole story. I tell him everything that happened. When he heard my story, he was like, man, I'm so sorry. And then proceeded to like start flirting with me, like right after. He started putting me in a headlock. I was like, oh, he's drunk. and. Like, pretty much right after I realized that, he started kissing me. I didn't want to kiss him. He, like, gets up and then goes to the office, and he's like, come here. And when I came over to him, because I was just fucking... I was like, why the f my In my head, I'm thinking, why is this guy just went to the office closet and stand in the doorway and gave me a kiss again. Like, I didn't even have, like, a reaction. And then after that, he, I was like, do you like me or something? And his answer is, I think you're cute. That night, I went with Matt, Jim, back to... um. Matt's place and Jim essentially immediately went to sleep. I have a picture of it. Hold on. Jim just immediately fell asleep. Jim responded by apologizing, uh, mentioning that he's been sexually assaulted in the past and expressing regret for any discomfort he caused Lex. Never my intention to make Lex feel uncomfortable at all, but that doesn't change the fact that I, I did make her feel uncomfortable. I take full responsibility for that. So after we finished talking about Dawn, I just remember us talking about being from Tennessee and when I, at that point, I really thought we were hitting it off. I distinctly remember saying, how hard is it to ask for consent? All you have to do is say, can I have a kiss? And then I said, can I have a kiss? And she said, yes. But it doesn't fucking matter. None of that fucking matters. All that matters is that I, I made someone feel uncomfortable. That my timing was extremely inappropriate. I think that matters because this is now I think two completely separate uh, interpretations of the event basically again Lex said that he just unprompted kissed her um, and Jim is basically claiming like he literally asked her to kiss her and she said yes which is like yeah okay your timing's shitty but like if this version of that is true then I, I you know what I mean it's like our right like yeah okay bad timing and uh, you're kind of a dumbass but it does matter. It makes a difference, I think. Anyway. Matt and Ryan then simultaneously uploaded their own responses. In regard to the prime allegation that was levied at Super Mega, of them not mediating the situation between Don and Lex in a professional or, you know, empathetic, friendly way, they both seem to concede on that and apologize directly to Lex. The bottom line is, Ryan and myself did not handle the situation well. Matt and I continuously tiptoed around the subject. I also want to state that we never took any action to cover up a sexual assault and we never tried to cover Don from any consequences. When Don arrived, he cried to me about how heartbroken he was. And the whole time I was none the wiser on what had actually taken place between him and Lex. And if I had known, I would not have housed him. We selfishly waited until we felt comfortable uh, to have this discussion with Don instead of having the victims back immediately. Matt and I did eventually sit down with Don to have this discussion and we handled that very poorly. I messed up when it came to Lex with the Don situation. Um, Lex should have felt safe and I am sorry to Lex for making them feel like they weren't hurt at that time. I'm not expecting forgiveness from Lex, 
but I do apologize entirely for how I fumbled that situation and how I wasn't a better friend. I was spineless. Uh, Lex, you deserved a lot better. As I said before, there is no excuse. I was simply a coward. Both of them also take time to directly address the claims that they had called their friend Daniel a coward for killing himself. In her video, Lex accused me of calling my friend Daniel, who passed away from suicide in 2015, a coward on multiple occasions. This really hurt to hear because this is simply untrue. To address these allegations head on about me making fun of the suicide of my best friend, I just want to state that it's just untrue. I have no recollection of ever opening up to Lex about my friend's suicide. And if I ever did open up to her about it, I know that I would never have referred to him uh, in the manner that she portrayed. But I will not stand by and let someone talk lies about the way I talked or treated my trauma in regards to Daniel. If I ever expressed that to Lex, which again, I firmly believe that I did not, if that's the case, then I find it wildly inappropriate that Lex would use something I said in a very vulnerable state uh, to weaponize and to make me look worse. Then in Ryan's response, he brings up something that was unearthed after Lex uploaded her video. I had inappropriate communications with fans while in a long-term committed relationship. While technically these actions are between two consenting adults, it truly is pathetic and there's no excuse for it. It's clear that instead of being responsible with the super mega brand, I abused my position and my power for selfish self-indulgence. And it seems like Ryan also kind of says that he um, won't be making any more videos. Since this is my final video, I have obviously been irresponsible with the platform I was given. So as it stands, I don't deserve one. It's a bit hard to tell what he means, but uh, that leads us into the rest of Matt's response. In regard to claims from Lex that Matt seemed more preoccupied with how Dawn's actions could affect Super Mega's brand, he said, In Lex's statement, she said that I brought up technicalities over Dawn's employment, uh, as well as me saying something along the lines of how much it would suck for Super Mega if this got out, and that Super Mega was my magnum opus, and I didn't want anything to ruin that. Over the course of the phone call, we did discuss Don's role with Super Mega, and while I don't recall making any of those specific comments, I do know I brought up our business and how Don's actions might affect that. That was completely wrong of me to do. It's less that it was wrong of you to do, bro. It more so just showed your priorities. Um, I mean, yeah, you can moralize it, I guess, yeah, but whatever. Rav and Lex have both mentioned that I've, I've made comments where I've said, well, Don isn't technically an employee, so we don't have to do anything. I don't see the logic in that or why I would have said that because that's not something I would have said. I think it's more realistic that something was misinterpreted or miscommunicated there. This was something that was corroborated by Rav and Lex. And I don't know why they would lie about it. Whatever. Uh, that's basically Ryan met, just emphasized that technically... He's not an employee, so they don't have to do anything. I've seen uh, people say that maybe what Ryan was saying, if there was a misinterpretation, maybe what Ryan was saying was that we don't even need to fire Don. We just need to not commission him again because he's not technically an employee. He just goes from project to project. So we might just not have to fire him, just like stop using him type of thing uh, for our work. Is possibly what happened but anyway and in my opinion the most serious and obvious mistake from matt was also addressed lex also brought up an instance where she went to go stay at the office and don was there this was a complete accident and misunderstanding on my end it is completely my fault i did not mean for that to happen and i take full responsibility for that i had been fed up with don staying with me uh especially uh after hearing what lex had told me and lex had not arrived in town yet at the time i also had two or three people staying with me on top of don and I felt really overwhelmed. I had a lot going on in my personal life at the time that was stressing me out and I felt overwhelmed and I sent Don to go stay with Rab at the office. I made a mistake where I forgot that I'd previously told Lex that she could stay there uh, and I sent Don there to get out of my house. I never intended for them to come in contact with each other. As soon as I realized my mistake, I told Don. Well, here's the thing. Uh, he texted Lex as well. That's why it's confusing. He texted Lex that this was the case. Well, I appreciate the context. I wish he would have addressed the messages he sent Lex directly because these look really bad. <laughs> but yeah, he chalks it up to his brain basically being fried. 
bottom line is Lex, I am sorry that I created that situation and put you in it. It never should have happened and my stupid fried brain let it happen and there's no excuse for that. Matt also claims that Lex's account of Matt as kind of a colder, callous dude in this situation felt a bit unfair because he had supported her from the start. For context, here are the text messages right before and right after that call. Uh, showing that I was supportive. I was not uh, completely callous like it was made out to be. Anyway, I'm gonna fast forward a little bit to July 4th. Uh, we had a party at the Super Megaplex and afterwards uh, Lex came over to my place to crash for the night. We had a very in-depth conversation about the entire Dawn situation. In this conversation, I sincerely apologized to Lex. I admitted where I was wrong and I took responsibility. I expressed remorse for how I had acted during the situation and she accepted my apology. This is why I ultimately found myself a bit confused as to why there's a notion that I have never addressed this with Lex because I have. So I want to play you Lex's version of how this conversation went just because uh, they're really different, I guess. We catch up a little bit. To my knowledge, I don't think we talked about Don at all, but one thing that did come up was Matt offered to pay for me to live somewhere, like down payment plus several months, which if you're in LA, if you know anything about the housing market in LA is an exorbitant amount of money. Most freaked out I think I've ever been by him, aside from the phone call, obviously. I immediately said no, like specifically apartment money for me to live alone. It was very weird. So Matt never mentions offering her money to stay at her own place, which is, actually kind of weird to me. I don't know why he wouldn't mention it. Maybe he was nervous that it would look as if he was trying to pay her off. To me, it kind of just shows like goodwill, you know? Like he's got money and he wants to pay so that she can live in a place that's more safe. And Lex seems to kind of frame this offer as like hush money. At this point, I didn't fully distrust him. I just had a gut feeling that no one gives you that amount of money for no reason. It felt like a bribe. That's at least like, I don't know, the way he was saying it, that's at least like 10k. Which, depending on your perspective, it could speak to Lex just really being cynical about Matt's intentions. Though it makes more sense if there actually wasn't a conversation about Dawn, and he just offered that without any preamble. And I guess given the situation where Matt sent her to stay at the same place as Dawn, and seeing how obvious they were about hiding the fact that Layton wasn't invited to Ryan's birthday. Birthday balloons, cute little party. Everyone in the super mega circle up to this point is there, except for Leighton. Has the rest of the party found out through text messages that Leighton found out about the party? Especially Matt and Ryan. They were, they were like, ugh. Like they, jet, like, they hate that guy. Like, people started taking down the balloons from, and stuffed them in the closet when they found out Leighton was on the way. From Lex's perspective, I could get how she could view this in like a more paranoid way. I, however, don't blame Lex at all for how she may feel because uh, I, this is a very complicated situation and I can't even begin to pretend to understand how she feels and what kind of emotions, uh, are, are at play here. But yeah, I just figured I would give you that context. He then goes on to describe the, uh, living situation, which was, you know, a large portion of Lex's video, where she kind of implies that Super Mega ended up making them homeless. Rav was coming to America and he needed somewhere to crash, so we told him he could crash at the Super Megaplex while he gets his feet off the ground, and later when Lex came out to LA, we said that she could crash there as well too, but problems did arise over time. The thing that really plagued the situation was lack of communication, miscommunication. Uh, all four of us could have acted more mature during that period. That is largely on myself and Ryan, uh, because after tensions rose, we honestly didn't really feel like having a conversation. As time went on and weeks turned into months of them staying at the office, uh, we were unsure of their plans and how motivated they were to actually find a place to move into. Here's a text from Lex in a group chat uh, acknowledging that they had been, you know, distant towards us because in her video, she states that we iced them out and gave them the cold shoulder but it was a two-way street. Really, it was a work matter for us because they were staying at our place of work. Shortly after they made the decision to voluntarily leave the office, uh, we did not throw them out. We did not make them homeless. Somewhere. So I'm not gonna lie, I don't even wanna cover this this part. I already agree with what he's pretty much saying, which is like it was a miscommunication. Like, even if you wanna say like Super Mega were dicks and how they handled it or it was just weird, whatever, or like they needed to be more empathetic. 
It's like now it's just opinion. This isn't like allegations. This is just kind of your own fucking whatever interpretation. So whatever. He also expresses that he's kind of confused as to why all of this is coming out, given that both Rav and Lex seem to have made up with him over this a long time ago. I rekindled things with Rav several months later. We spoke about the last summer and how we were all in bad places and it was awkward. Uh, Rav and I you know, apologized to each other and made up. We did this at my house as well as a little discussion at Creator Clash 2023, which again is why I found myself very confused when Rav said what he did on Twitter recently. If he still felt that way, I wish that he had reached out to me. And since last summer, I assumed that my relationship with Lex was much better. For example, here's several texts I received from Lex between November of last year and February of this year. Good luck tonight, Matt. Heart emoji. I'm in Nashville, but I'd like to try to come to a show before tour is over. We should have a cookout when we're all back in town to celebrate. I said, thank you. We'll party hardy soon. I hope you have a good time with your family. Also, congrats on one mil. The next day I replied and said, thank you. Then on my birthday, she texted me, happy birthday, Matt. I love you. Hope your day is great. This is kind of a theme throughout this where there is such, there's totally a level of formal or like surface level niceness. Okay. Surface level um, pleasantry between the people, you know, communicating. But then it all culminates in this like, what the fuck have you done? You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> I don't... Look, Matt Matt and Ryan also communicated in this, like, formal niceness kind of way, so it's tough to say, but, like, yeah, it's a weird scenario, bro. It's a weird fucking scenario. I thought that after I apologized to her last July, things had smoothed out, and I think you could see why I would think that, but that communication ceased around the time that we fired Leighton, who is a close friend of hers. So this is where the video kind of stops being about Lex and where Matt begins to address accusations made by other people who inserted themselves into this controversy. He just mentioned a guy named Layton, who was an employee at Super Mega, they got fired. Matt positions them firing Layton as a turning point in his relationship with Lex. And throughout the rest of the video, Matt will basically imply that Layton was the architect of them getting canceled this time. There's also this woman, Morgpie, who is a sex worker that Lex cited in her original video when she talked about Matt Watson being a cheater. After Lex's video, Morgpie also came out with her live stream where she made her claims against Matt Watson publicly. Look, I'm just going to skip the part where he talks about his relationship. Long story short, it was just bullshit to include that. Uh, I guess technically he says that he did technically cheat on his original girlfriend, but it was a kiss. He kissed his now girlfriend while he was technically still dating his other girlfriend, after which point he fucking broke up with her. Then... He was in a state of flux, basically, uh, before he entered a relationship with the other girl, uh, where he ended up hooking up with this sex worker woman, Morg Pie. This Morg Pie woman, I have not watched her stream, and I don't really want to watch her stream. I'll be fucking completely frank with you. Uh, but yes, this Morg Pie woman effectively just drops more tea on Matt Watson that honestly is probably a fucking waste of time. She basically, Matt Watson basically paints her as. A scorned lover, someone who's mad, basically, that Matt didn't end up dating her after they had sex. Um, and, yeah, he pretty much writes off everything she's saying as just her being bitter, okay? Morgan not only brought my current girlfriend into the situation on stream without her consent, she also name-dropped my girlfriend and revealed that we were in a relationship, which was not public information. She lied about conversations with my ex-girlfriend. She wrongly stated that I had been having a multiple-month affair with my current girlfriend while I was dating my ex-girlfriend. She lied that we had been consistently sexting when we only sexted for one night in August. And I have all of our texts messages to prove that she also falsely claimed that i was cheating on my current girlfriend which is not true i won't cap like you like inserting herself into this is just high key like scum like i think whatever i just think it's scum like i don't know following when i had that text conversation with morgan in june where we smoothed things over morgan began hanging out with our ex-employee Leighton Moore. So here Matt mentions Leighton again as a potential turning point in his relationship with Morgpie. After Lex came out with her video, he made this three hour long uh, stream where he cried, uh, yeah, he talked about his own personal traumas, and he dropped some fat fucking allegations toward Matt and Ryan, basically. Just to summarize, because it is a lot, Leighton claimed that the super mega guys would make gay jokes that made him uncomfortable, him being the only gay person they were working with. 
In his response, Matt makes it super clear that Layton was consenting and even encouraging these gay jokes. It would be weird if we stopped. In this message, Layton says he sees no issues with the jokes. Here he says he feels more comfortable around us than anyone. And I said, real talk, we absolutely love having you as a part of Super Mega. You've completely revolutionized our company. Layton responds by saying, I love all the gay jokes you guys throw at me. And I said, you're a crucial member now. If they're ever too much though, just tell us. And he said, I'm so fucking happy to hear that. I fucking love working with you guys. Nah, you guys have never offended me. I think Justin is nervous that it'll come off as homophobic, but I love you guys and the gay jokes. It would be weird if you guys held back, LMAO. Look, it, I'm just gonna be real. It seems pretty fervent that this guy was fine with it, okay? Like, it's one thing to say, like, it's fine, you know what I mean? But, like, he seems pretty emphatically, you know, like, it doesn't matter. It's all good, my opinion. Here's another instance where I said, also legit, if we're making too many gay jokes, please tell me. We're always fucking kidding, but I get it if it gets too much, haha. He responded by saying, I look like an F slur. I said, oh. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, perfect response, LMAO. We're going to do some awesome shit, man. And he said, I've never felt more at home with a job. Layden expressed feelings that Super Mega was looking for any reason to fire him, which Matt responded to by showing texts where Layden was acknowledging his poor performance. It's not fair to you two that I keep screwing up. I feel like I'm the new Jackson causing massive issues to the company rather than being an asset and elaborated on the fact that they paid him two months salary as severance, despite the fact that they weren't legally obligated to do that. Layton also made the claim that Matt and Ryan were callous about their friend Daniel's suicide, which Matt outright denies. Layton claims that he was sexually harassed by Matt and Ryan, where they exposed themselves to him. The Layton guy in his fucking uh, live stream mentioned how Matt and Ryan would flash him unprompted. You know, show him his cock and balls. And his arsehole. And basically poised it in a way where it's like, this is sexual harassment that they committed to me. And in response, Matt Watson said the following. It's true that we did do a lot of crude jackass style bits around the office. And that's apparent in our videos too. But if Layton ever felt uncomfortable by any of that, he never showed it and he never brought it up. I find it a little ironic that he complained about this considering, for example, in December, we were recording a podcast when he came in unannounced and showed us his cock and balls. In late 20s, uh, <laughs> show Hey, Layton. Hey. Whoa. Whoa. Somebody's putting on Do you see his show. balls? Layton, you want to come take a seat? Come Do you see his balls? Okay, hold on. I don't think it's appropriate for the podcast. Oh, well, you want to you wrap, wrap, wrap yourself in a towel? That is a three-hander. That is a three-hander. Yeah, yeah, at least. Yeah. He's not lying. Or, or, or before he came around the corner, he stood there for three minutes going... This is why I don't think this guy is a nefarious fucking puppet master, mastermind, whatever, you know. Yes, maybe he's manipulative, all this stuff, but it's like, bro, anybody with like an ounce of a brain or like really scheming would be aware that they had done that, like flash them on the podcast that's easily verifiable, you know what I mean? Uh, which also that kind of just leads me to think like, yeah, this guy was just having a manic episode. This was not like a planned thing because he was so uncareful with the shit he was doing. Um, but yeah, obviously still fucked up and scum, 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 scum and a half, scum in a fucking quarter. Scum in three fourths. But, uh, you know. Happens to the best of us, am I right? Uh, scum. <sighs> scum. Not nice. Very not nice. Not not cool. Not nice. Not nice. <laughs> Two things that I wish Matt would have directly addressed were the claims that Matt and Ryan tried to hide the fact that Layden wasn't invited to Ryan's birthday because obviously for Lex, her seeing that definitely informed her opinion on the guys. And Layton's claims that Matt took pictures of him while he was exposed to going to the bathroom. Though there's an obvious implication from Matt that none of Layton's words can be trusted. Something that I do think he backs up pretty well. It was even stated on Layton's stream that I had asked Jim to get a house and move in with my current girlfriend so I could sneak over uh, and have sex with her under the guise that I was just meeting up with a co-worker. You know, because I live by myself, and there's definitely nowhere I could have sex. It's just an absolutely <laughs> ridiculous... Eventually, Layton ended his monetized stream with a self-promo and immediately took to Twitter to gloat about our downfall. Who's talking that mill... Who's taking that mill and play... Holy fuck, he can't even spell. That mill play button back. For real, though, like... Gloating about their fucking channel getting cancelled is like... So... It's just not even that it's scum, bro. It's more like it's like... It is... A self-report about you know, 
your, I guess, intentions, right? Because, again, if your fucking intentions are uh, just to air this out and, like, you know, make Super Mega fucking operate better in the future, it's just weird to dogpile on uh, the whole canceling thing, you know? It's like, oh, we got him. We got him, boys. It's like, bro, come on, man. This is like a shit situation, bro. Like, it's nothing to fucking celebrate. Completely anyway. taking Lex's situation and making it about himself. You Something to note is that while Leighton worked at Super Mega, he also accepted and held a full-time position at the merch company, which fulfilled our merch. So after Leighton's call-out post and after we posted our response, he was advised by his employer that starting shit publicly with one of the company's bigger clients was a bad look and a horrible business decision. Leighton made an agreement with his employer that he would not cause any further drama, but he was furious that he could not say more. Leighton was extremely... Okay, so I don't know how he knows that. He's just assuming, I guess. I'm not sure. Maybe he talked to this employer. I don't know. Again, this is... We need to be clear. This is Matt parent painting a narrative of Leighton, okay? This is an actual, like, um, kind of train of thought that he is spelling out for us of this guy is actively trying to tear down Super Mega, and effectively, he is kind of the puppet master behind all of this coming to light. You know, not saying that he controlled or manipulated Lex, Morpai, Rav, all necessarily, but, like, this guy might have been, you know, uh, the one who planted the seed of discontent among all of them and was, like, recruiting people as, like, you know, here's the gang. You know, this is kind of the picture that Matt is painting, and so you need to keep that in mind as, like... Layton's probably less sophisticated, if I had to guess. Um, but, you know, some of the sentiments might be true. It's up for you to uh, kind of interpret that on your own. I later received anonymous screenshots that were leaked from a Discord server. There's a Discord server that basically talks about how Layton uh, can't cancel Super Mega because he has an agreement with his employer. Um, so if they can get Super Mega canceled to the point where they get dropped by this merch company... Then, since Super Mega won't be a client of the merch company that Leighton works for, then Leighton will be free to cancel Super Mega. So this Discord server was basically theorizing that we, if, the second that Super Mega gets in one controversy, then we can drop a ton of stuff on them. You know what I mean? Uh, thing is, he doesn't. I don't think he provi provides enough proof that like Leighton was specifically in on this, though. I get what he's saying because he's saying like the only reason that this Discord server would be even aware of Leighton's agreement is if Leighton was disclosing his agreement to people. Okay, so I understand what he's saying. This is all from April, right after Leighton made his initial statement. And because I wondered if I'd ever have to use this, I emailed this to myself as evidence, which you can see in this video. I am opening up the email and showing the date as proof. Look, the fact I will... It's kind of smart that he shows this because this kind of does show like they saw this coming. You know what I mean? Like they didn't know what shape it would take, I guess. But the fact that they saw this coming, it makes it very clear. This latent guy was, you know, waiting and ready. And bro, I won't cap that stream that he was doing. He was literally saying that he was uh, hiking in the mountains uh, three days prior, and the second he heard about this going on, he immediately rushed back to his home so that he could go on this live stream and basically vent. Um, the only thing that I will say, though, is, like, this guy's not a super genius, like, a fucking evil villain genius, you know what I mean? Like, this guy's a fucking idiot, like, straight up. And he's also mentally ill as well, so it's like, I don't know how much those variables are playing into it, but, uh, he seemed very, very manic in his video, so, you know, take that how you will. We worried that this would be the case, and it soon proved true. Shortly after, one of Leighton's best friends, who is Lex's boyfriend, uh, tried- Is this true? Bro, is this true? Oh shit, I didn't even realize he said best friend. One of Leighton's best friends is Lex's boyfriend. This fucking guy, holy shit. Are you serious? I didn't know he's- I didn't know his best friend? So this fucking guy, who's Leighton's- one of Leighton's best friends- Starts the stream with super mega fucking sub counter going down while he's smoking weed listening to his own album that he made with Nick is not green Shit, man. This rabbit hole does go kind of mm, I don't know, bro. I don't know. I don't want to fucking engage with this shit, man. I don't know It's weird man It's weird, but I don't know I don't fucking know because it's 
That's weird. I want to say this guy is sus too. I think he's sus. I think I can safely say that. But the thing is, is that I understand this guy more so because he's basically like his girlfriend, you know, was in this scenario. The thing is, it's like, bro, your fucking girlfriend got sexually assaulted and super mega fumbled the situation. And your response is to like so casually go on this stream and just like bitterly celebrate the fact that their channel's dying. It really kind of undermines this fucking severity in a, in a weird way to me. It almost feels disrespectful, but I understand his um, girlfriend Lex is, is in on it. She's, uh, you know, present at the stream. So they're kind of just chilling. So uh, this might just be some Zoomer shit, you know what I mean? This is such a Zoomer fucking, bro, this is like... Try explaining this to your fucking grandparents, bro. Holy shit. ...in saying that he has heard us say the N-word multiple times. All right, okay, so this is where he gets... So, bro, yo, Matt's... Matt's fucking going in now, dude. And you know what sucks, man? These fucking guys, if they had just shut their fucking mouths, Lex would have gotten a lot less blowback, you know what I mean? Because now all of this, I guess, juice gets revealed in the response because Matt Watson kind of fucking has to respond to this stuff. He has to, bro. Like, come on, what the fuck? You know, he's not a saint. Now this paints this entire kind of situation as opportunists dogpiling, right? And it kind of paints Lex in a bad light. Okay, this is Lex's boyfriend, the guy that we're looking at right here, all right? Our friend right here, this guy. This is him on Twitter. Just to make sure I am understanding right, you heard Matt and Ryan dropping hard R's multiple times as a joke. Yes, along with the F slur. Times. In reality, we've only met this individual a handful of times, and it's mostly been at social events and always accompanied by Lex. So to think that we would just casually be dropping the N-word with a hard R in front of not only someone who's a stranger, but also a woman of color, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. He also mentioned the Chuck E. Cheese joke, and I don't think it's a coincidence that a short time before he posted- Ask them about Chuck E. Cheese's middle name. Since you're fucking stupid, I'll explain the joke. Chuck E. Cheese's middle name is the M-word with the hard R. <laughs> a joke I heard multiple times while around their office, as have multiple other people. Hmm. Posted this stuff, Layton replied to a tweet about Super Mega with a gif of- Ah, okay. You gonna respond to just straight up lying to people? Was it just for attention or do you just enjoy treating your friends terribly? Uh, laughing my ass off, he pays the Chuck E. Cheese. So this is interesting because Matt's essentially saying that Layton planted this seed in Ethan, his best friend's head, right? Of, you know, Layton clearly told this guy a lot of shit about Super Mega. Here's what, here's what I, if I had to guess, here's what went down. But this is, again, keep in mind, this is speculation. This is completely based on people's word that we're basing this off of now, okay? Um, the Ethan guy claims that Super Mega in front of him said hard R, hard, you know, F word, whatever. Matt from Super Mega is claiming this is a blatant lie um, and a dumb lie at that. And so I could see a scenario where this Leighton fella being best friends with the Ethan guy just kind of told this Ethan guy, like, yeah, they drop hard R's and they he tells him like the Chuck E. Cheese joke. He tells him all this shit. So like this Leighton guy puts all this poison into the Ethan guy's head and like makes him really hate Super Mega. And then his own fucking girlfriend has this situation and he's like, bro. And then so the Ethan guy's like, yeah, fuck, fuck these guys, man. Like, fuck these guys. Like, they don't have any charitability. Fuck them. And then this Ethan guy is actively collaborating and working with Nick is not green. And he kind of semi informs Nick is not green of how fucked and pieces of shit these guys are. So you can understand how it, I, I see how. It could be a scenario where Leighton did poison the well, right? I understand the conspiracy. Yeah, I mean, but I just, you can't really prove any of this, right? Unless these people come forward. So take that all with a grain of, of salt, really, because at this point, it's really all just a messy, disgusting, fucking di disgraceful situation of with a lot of, um, you know, unverifiable kind of speculation. So, yeah unfortunate i guess so to summarize this has devolved into just being a mess it took me a while to get this video out because it is such a tangled web of information at this point and i'm sure there's some details that i glossed over in the full stream i spent a decent amount of time talking about nick is not green a commentator who made a very like one-sided initial video about these allegations and i might upload my raw reaction to that in the coming days but uh 
Suffice it to say, this situation, just every aspect of it just makes me feel gross. So, yeah. Give your mother a hug, get some milk and cookies, and go to bed. Bye, bye, bye. Bye.